So now you've completed the practical, these are the results that you should have got. So let's have a look at what they show. Well, we can see there's a clear positive correlation at first. As the light intensity increases, the number of bubbles produced in one minute also increases. This is because with more light, photosynthesis can happen at a faster rate and therefore more bubbles are produced. However, at a certain point, around about a light intensity of four, we seem to get to a peak and it starts to level off. No matter how much we increase the light intensity, the number of bubbles produced in one minute stays roughly the same at just above 50. In the next lesson, we'll look at why that is. Now, this isn't the only way to carry out the experiment. There are other ways of doing it. So how else could we investigate changing light intensity? So if we have a lamp that we can't change the intensity, like this one, we could do so by changing the distance. At different distances, the light intensity would change. The light intensity would increase as the distance decreased. So we completed this experiment for you, and this is the data that we collected. On the left of the graph, you can see the distance that we used between the lamp and the pondweed, varying from 10 to 50 centimetres. We repeated each experiment three times, and then we calculated a mean. Plotting the data would look something like this. You can clearly see that there's a negative trend, but it's not a straight line, it's a curve going down. The pattern on this graph is what we call inversely proportional. What does that mean? Well, to understand that, we need to know about the inverse square law. When you turn a light bulb on, it projects light all around. If we held a square piece of paper away from this light at a distance of one meter, like so, the light would shine upon it. We could work out the intensity of this light by thinking about the area that the light has to spread out upon. We're using relative units here, but in this case, the intensity would be one amount of light per square. So one divided by one, giving us an intensity of one. If we then tried this experiment again, but with a second piece of paper, but this time held two meters away, then again, we could think about the intensity. There's no more light. The light has spread out over a larger area. So therefore the intensity of light falling upon each square would be less. We can work out this intensity again using the same equation. We've got the same unit for our amount of light of one, but this time it's shared between four squares. And so the intensity would be one divided by four or 0 0.25. Each square would be receiving four times less light than when it was placed one meter away. We can repeat this again, and this time at three meters where D equals three. Again, you might be able to think about the pattern here. Because we've got the same unit of light but being spread out again over an even larger area, each square will receive less. This time, we've got the same amount of light going between nine squares. So the intensity will be one divided by nine or 0 0.11. And finally, we can think about if we did this again, but this time at a distance equals four. Again, the light is going to be even more spread out. And so each individual square will receive less light than previously. Here, there are 16 squares. So the intensity is one divided by 16, which rounds to 0 0.06. So how does this link to biology? Well, this is what we're seeing in the light experiment with the plants. As the plant is moved away from the light source and the distance increases, the intensity of light decreases and therefore the rate of photosynthesis drops. We call this the inverse square law. You might be able to notice where the name comes from. Let's take our first example when the distance was one. To work out the intensity, it was one divided by the distance squared, one over one squared, which gave us one. At distance two, to work out the intensity, it was one divided by four, or one divided by the distance two squared. One over two squared is the same as one over four. 
at distance 3 it was 1 over 9 or 1 over 3 squared and finally at distance 4 it was 1 over 4 squared 1 over 16. To work out the intensity of light at each of the different distances we can use the general equation 1 over x squared. You can see that this calculation is the inverse 1 over of the square of x 1 over x squared and this is where the name the inverse square law comes from and we can apply this scientific understanding to the data that we collected earlier so if on the same graph we plot the theoretical data from the light intensity experiment you can see the orange line which represents this data has a very similar pattern and shape to the green line that represents the experimental data. And this shows how the inverse square law affects the rate of photosynthesis in plants as you reduce the light intensity by moving them further from a light source. 